with my uh, guest commentator, Andrew Sauce McCasker. Sauce, welcome. Thank you very much, Beeves. Uh, very excited to be here. Um, we're, I think we're in for a real barnstormer of a game here. Um, Mammoth and I-Beam, both very strong teams. These are the two teams that versed each other in the third, fourth playoff in AUC last year. It's a bit of history there, so this should be an absolute cracker. What was the result of that game? Uh, the result of that game was I-Beam coming out. Um, Mammoth took a really, really strong start, I think 4-0 and then just completely folded. So they're certainly looking for redemption. Maybe if they didn't party so hard the night before, <laughs> they might have gotten that bronze medal. Uh, look, that could potentially be the case. And All here right. we go. <laughs> Back in the game. Great pull by uh, Spielman. Sends it to uh, Greeny. Greeny goes to high side. Oh, great grab by the... Uh, goes the inside and that is a D by Max Murray. Great pressure there by Mammoth. Wins just picked up a little bit. J-Mac, John McNaughton looking for Miles McCallum. Can't quite bring it in. Wind definitely took a piece of that. For those watching at home, uh, you'll realize that the wind is coming to the camera. Um, so that was being, the wind would have affected that throw very much. We've got Chris Hill grabbing the disc, looking upfield, looking upfield, nothing happening. Goes back to Greenfield. Oh, puts a low disc. Miles. Great D. And uh, looks like Mammoth is just taking a chill pill. McNaughton coming to pick up the disc. Easy little swing there to Spielman. Taking his time. Mammoth looking very composed. Tim McAllister, the American import. Captain the U24 American team in Perth recently. Ooh. Swinging back to J-Mac in the middle. Spielman doing a lot of work here. Looking for McAllister. Three Dump players doing score. all the work. DSS works time and time again. And, uh, you know, textbook works Mam once more. Man with the, with the break, start off with. So, Source, how big is this man's squad? Because we're seeing a lot of grey bodies on the field at the moment. Off the top of my head, I think there's 24 guys on this squad. Um, last year, Mammoth took 26. Uh, deliberately. Um, the plan was, I believe, to take it a little bit less, and then people just kept rocking up. Like uh, like who specifically? So, Tim McAllister, the American we were just talking about, he was a late addition. Nigel Kruger, a Canadian as well, originally picked on the Div 2 team for Mammoth. Then, after the selectors got a couple of looks at him, realised that the kids got some skills, and so he got boosted up as well. Uh, I actually believe, speaking to Nige, that Kruger isn't his last name. It's his middle name. But uh, for some really? reason, he's trying to hide his identity on Facebook. What's his, <laughs> what's his last name? Uh, it, Let's put it out there. It's Lainsley or something of the... Uh, close to it. I know it starts with an L. So Nigel we'll Lainsley. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to figure it out a bit later. I think but, Kruger uh, sounds better to be it honest It sounds a lot you. better. Yeah, it sounds way more better. And if, if, okay, if whatever we find and it's something uh, worse, we'll make sure we give the uh, Saskatoonian... Huh. or whatever you want to call him. Uh, we'll call him by Kruger instead. Elliot Cook with the pull. Nice big inside out. Working with the wind. And it looks like, ooh, close catch. Sends it to Davey. Dave with the disc. And we've got a, a puppy zone with, looks like Dan Gladish fouling the mark. Looks like an uncontested. Disc is back in. Greenfield with the disc. Looking for the middle. Nothing happening. Folks got the disc. Folks looking up. Back into the middle of the field. Stoddard. Stoddard rips it. The wind has taken it. Saved that disc. And it is in the creek. Straight in. Didn't have a shot at anyone stopping that. A uh, big thanks to Lock Murph for uh, not catching the disc, but then volunteering to grab the disc. Yeah, he looked over there and then just decided to watch it sail over his head. Yep. So we'll get a new disc in. Mammoth's going to take it from the sideline, not far from their own end zone. One of the uh, charms of Annalee Junior Soccer Fields, that uh, there is a big creek that we have been dealing with for years of uh, sealing our discs. However, back to the game. Elliot Grimmin looking up to, El to Grimmin. Grimmin looking to centre back to Cook. Looks off Bonnie. Bonnie gets it again. 
Mammoth sitting in a vert at the moment. Grimman doing a lot of work there around the disc, taking his time. Swing to Kruger or Lainsley, whatever his surname is. Back to Grimmond. Still sitting in the middle. Nice little break throw to Zev. And we've got a call on the field. It would be, oh, it looks like a bit of a head clash. Gladish yeah. is grabbing his head. Same with Greenfield. Oh. Looks like a shoulder to head. Maybe if Gladish's head wasn't so big, he wouldn't have hit the shoulder. Yeah, we don't want to... Kernak back to Grimmond. Kernak to Bonnie. Mammoth operating on the sideline. Looks up to Elliot Cook. Easy in the end there for Mammoth. Nice weight on that throw by Bonnie throwing into the wind. Look, Bo Bonnie knows how to throw a flick. I've played uh, many seasons with him in the Brisbane Ultimate Mixed League, and uh, he'll take the flick any day of the week he can. So, fortunately, Elliot Cook did give him a good option to throw the flick to. Yeah, those guys play a lot of league together as well, so those connections, you'll be seeing them as all day today. Mm. All right, 2-0 up. Good start by Mammoth. Let's hope that uh, Newcastle can bring it in for a, a tighter game. If, it, if Newcastle had a coach, and uh, if the coach was here, and actually got on a flight, unlike Nathan Purcell, would, uh, what would you be saying? to the I-Beam team. If I was the coach uh, who is here and not Nathan Purcell um, and I didn't miss my flight or and then my second flight as well, I would probably be saying just go out there and just compose yourselves. Mammoths obviously come out um, very, very strong at the start. Just make sure you're playing your own game. I don't think it's time to go to panic stations just yet. Just work on what you know and uh, keep with those structures. Absolutely, I agree with your source there. It's, uh, it looks like that Mammoth has, even though it has only been two points, it looks like that uh, Mammoth is playing their own game and uh, I-Beam's trying to match theirs, which isn't working too well for them. But, back to the game, big pull out. It's out. And uh, is it going to be in the creek? Again? No, Liam Grimmond saves the disc. That's why Grimmond is a better guy than Murphy. All right, Greeny, Greenfield. Walking it up to the brick mark. And Frisbee, if the disc does go out on the full, the opposition can decide to bring it up into the middle of the field. Oh, what a pivot. <laughs> and it's back in play. Mama setting up in a Davey match disc. defense. Goes back to the high side. Goes back to Davey. Davey looking to Greeny. Greeny at the disc. As you can tell, the sidelines are very active. Hopefully that you'll be able to hit them over me. Oh, inside shot to Hayes. Hayes wanting an option, not getting it. Has to center, uh, go back to the middle of the field. But Greeny's in a power position. Looks for super dump, not happening. Goes back to Davey. Davey to Folks. Folks with the receiver going through. You got Sinclair at the front of the end zone. Wants it. Throws a backhand dump back to Davey. Break backhand. Oh, what a great grab by Greenfield. Outstanding grab there. Oh, but he cannot convert. Just Maybe the Mammoth defense was just uh, pushing them to that sideline. Look, I think, you know, if you make them throw enough passes, the plan is that eventually they're going to stuff one up. And that fortunately happened for Mammoth here. McAllister. And there is a pick on the field with a great flex. By Davey, I believe. No. Hayes. All right. McIntyre picking the disc up in the far corner. Oh, that's his last name. I always forget his last name. Leon McIntyre. Otherwise known as Fatty. As you can tell by his... Um, Extreme obesity. Fatty, just having a look here. Not a lot happening there. McAllister now pulls the trigger, looking for Thompson. Oh, but a great D by Ryan Davey. I think that was a poor read by Thompson. Mm. 
Well, he can jump, but can he read? Well, I'm not sure if he passed English. He is a teacher, though, so hopefully. He is a teacher, and that's the one thing that people forget, that he isn't just a gorgeous body. He is a gorgeous mind as well. All right, we look for the dump. Dump goes to Davey. Davey, back. oh, close grab. Oh, and suits it. Good soot with Robbie Pakulis grabbing it. Great run down. Looks at Sinclair. But John, no, it wasn't John. It was Trent calling a travel. Thank you, Dan Gladish. If only he got out of the way so I could see the play. Oh, Tim McAllister nearly broken up line. But no, just still in play. Greenfield with the disc. Looking for options, nothing happening. Go back to Davey. Davey swings. Back to Davey. Goes to Greeny. Greeny looking for his options. Oh, very close. Calls to the disc and scores. That's a huge bid on that D by Trent Thompson. Trying to make up for, I guess, uh, that little misread before. Look, I tell you what, Newcastle looks pretty composed there, but uh, the Mammoth did definitely work quite hard to get uh, those very close opportunities. Yeah, that wasn't easy. That wasn't easy. They did, again, have to throw quite a few passes there to work it in. Mammoth held them out on that end zone for a, a number of passes. I think that break that they got around uh, to the high side is, is what uh, is what got her there for I-beam. Absolutely. And it looks like we're, uh, we had a timeout. So, uh, I-beam taking a drinks break. Well, they've got a very short roster yep. here. Made even shorter by the fact that Nathan Pearsall didn't miss. He missed his flight last night and then missed his flight this morning as well. If only he actually caught his flights. Maybe if he didn't sleep in, he would actually be here to help his team instead of them running nearly savage. If he slept in this morning, what was his excuse for last night, do you reckon? Friday night. A couple look, of beers after work, Probably maybe? had a few beers. Oh. We're just speculating here, folks. We're, we're, we're obviously not close to the I-beam. We might get a uh, I-beam uh, interview in the middle of the uh, game at halftime if uh, one of the players great, yeah. wants to do it. So we can get the inside scoop on their missing player. Let's hope that he can come back sometime this weekend so that uh, I-Beam doesn't run with only, what's that, 11 players? 11? Yeah. Saying that, that is very typical Newcastle to have the shortest squad Absolutely. of the tournament. They've been doing this for years and um, obviously it's been working with their third place at AEC last year, their second place at SMO a couple of weeks ago. Sauce, were you there at SMO last week? I, w I wasn't there at SMO. Um, I had other things to do. But your team was, though. My team was there, yes. Who's, what, what team do you play for? Uh, I play for the second Mammoth team, uh, the team that's going to Division 2 in Wollongong in a week's time. Um, yeah. Which is also going to be covered by Ulti TV. Is that right? Yep, it is. Good. Mm -hmm. Make sure we get all the highlights. What, what do you think your, uh, your chances are? How's the team looking? I think the team's looking really good, actually. There's a lot of... A lot of younger guys. Um, been really impressed the way they've improved okay, over the course of the preseason. Um, apparently, they had a quite a good run out at uh, at SMO. Um, yeah, I, th I think there's a number of superstars in the making on the squad. Uh, any, any names you want to drop now so that you can claim it for flame, uh, fame later? Murray Goble. Oh, Murray Boy with the gorgeous. Gorgeous locks. Luscious locks, Murray Goble. Absolutely fantastic. This is for you, Muzz. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get to see Mammoth on offense for the first time here. Who do we have on the Mammoth line? Uh, we've got Marcus Lee, Liam Grimmins, Ev Pernak, Sam Gaunt, Lachlan Murphy, Sebastian Brown, and Joel Cook. Fun fact, Lachlan Murphy has the second biggest hands in Queensland Ultimate. Who's got the biggest? Rob de Hollander. Oh, of course. That man is a truck stop. He is enormous. And apparently he's been growing a beard. He has. It looks quite good, actually. Oh, so that is a 
Tasty, tasty pull by Davey. It's very Sitting floaty. up, working with the wind. Brown with the disc. Plenty of time, no mark. Looking for Grimmond. Manages to get around two players. Wants to center it. Pernak with the bailout. Marcus Leesk. Good undercut, but looked off. Sam Gaunt. Sam Gaunt has wheels. He's one of the younger rookie uh, math players, I believe. Yeah, he played on uh, the second team last year, went to New Zealand, and uh, has really stepped up his game. And he's going for a sprint now. He's going. Is there a throw it? No, Ooh. not coming. Permac doesn't want it. Brown. Always dependable. Ooh, big fake. Looks for Joel Cook with a fairly open under. Oh, big fakes. Gets the man on the ground, though. Lachlan Murphy. Tight mark. Marcus Leesk. Sam Gaunt, back to Murphy. Looks for Brown to center. Pernak, getting close to the end zone here. Back to Brown in the middle. Grimmond, assessing his option. Throws through to Gaunt, right on the edge of the end zone. Very smart dump there. Mammoth are moving the disc very quickly. Oh, what a great layout by uh, Davey, who picks it up and soots it. Pulls the trigger. Oh, that is Pernak's gold. chasing, he's got some speed. Oh, what a great grab by the intended receiver. Great read, looking for some options. No one's there. Centers it back to Sinclair. Sinclair wants something, not happening. Throws through the man, and there is a foul. Our microphones are actually picking up the conversation, which is very good. Uh, but it looked like it was a uncontested foul by Liam Grimman. With Sinclair having the disc back at still zero. Good use of the hand signals there as well by Grimman. Helps our commentators and the rest of the team very well. Davey with the disc. Davey puts it to Hayes. Hayes centers it back. Oh, nil play. Davey with the disc again in the center of the field, looking for options. Nothing happening. Oh, but a great grab by Pakula. Is he in? Nope. Not in. Wants something. Has to go back. Goes back to Davey. Davey's looking for something. Centers it. Pakula's got the disc. Can't see anything happening. Wants something up the line. Stall's Stop. getting high. Yeah, and cannot connect despite the fantastic layout. That is a uh, that is very unfortunate for the Newcastle side. They worked it hard with that fantastic D all the way from Ryan Davey. Hopefully we'll get a uh, a replay of that later. But back to the game. Oh, no. oh, that is very unfortunate for the Mammoth side. Early pick up, jump in for the goal. And easy goal for and Newcastle. After we all. are tied at two two now. With uh, I believe that was number eighty eight, Josh Bolton. Great name. With uh. With the goal. Mammoth offense got broken on their first opportunity. Mm, by uh, an unfortunate misread, or I would say miscommunication, by the Samuel Gaunt, just with the disc behind him instead of in front of him. Yeah, we'll see what that does to uh, to the to their psyche, whether or not they can come out and um, put this one away. Mm, absolutely. Lenze. Lenze. Nigel Lenze. Not Kruger. Even though we all agree that Kruger is a better name. Kruger is a better name. Is Kruger his middle name? Yeah, right. How many middle names do you have? Nigel Kelly Kruger Lenze. Double K in the middle there. Right. Do you think you have any uh, Canadian watches back home? No? Yeah? Oh, all right. Well, is uh, all of Saskatoon tuning in? How many it, people it, are in Saskatoon? Three or four hundred, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> Disc goes up, but it goes out. And that's, that's going to be Unfortunately, the, uh, the backhand pull was not working with that wind and decided to uh, go out of the field. Yeah, this wind's playing havoc early on. Mm. 
For as as a fellow Brisbaneite, would you say that uh, this is a windy, gusty day for uh, definitely? Ultimate? Yeah, it's not the windiest, but it's definitely windier than normal. Uh, Brown with the disc to Spielman, low pass, but great pick up by Callum. He's looking for a bailout. Gets a big De Hollander, big quick boy mark Hollander. to Leesk. Pulls the trigger on the forehand to Spielman. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable! Is oh. there going to be a call? No? Wow. That is absolute heartbreak for Chris Zoddard. Fell straight to him on the ground there. Oh. You couldn't you couldn't plan that to happen. Let's let's look at that uh, replay. Dropped it straight off the bat and then look at that angle. Straight back into his hand. That is extremely unfortunate. However, that uh, Callan should have caught that in the first place. Yeah, he just he got lucky then. Let's yeah. let's be honest. He got lucky and just happened to be in the right space at the right time there to catch the scraps. So Mammoth with a very lucky hold Ooh, on their offense. Breaking news: We believe that uh, oh dear. Callan is hobbling off the field, as you can see on the screen, uh, probably because of uh, the play that just happened. Also, being helped off by another guy with an injured ankle in Sam McGuckin. Uh, now, Guck is a uh, well-known face in the Brisbane scene and getting more well-known in the uh, international and national scene. Uh, he says he has a, as you watch him hobbling off onto the field, on the other side of the field, uh, he will be hopefully playing nationals, he says, but uh, he's the vice captain for Mammoth is definitely not playing today. No. All right. Lock, Lachlan Bonnie with the pull. Taking the wind into account. This one's going to land in. And Greeny lets it roll behind him. Didn't touch it. But it's in the back of the end zone, which great is a great pull. pull. Keeps it on the low side. Wants to try and get on the high side, which he does. A lot of Callahan calls from the sideline. Greeny with the disc. Looking for some out... Mid, mid op, mid uh, field options, which he's not getting. Oh, unless the zone gets broken, which it did. Let's start hard. Start of folks. Folks to Davey on the low side of the field. Looks like Mammoth has transitioned into a zone. Centers it back. They're definitely playing with folks. Up D. Folks to Greening Field. Plays through the man. Big lab by Liam Grimm, who doesn't get the frisbee. Chris Hill wants to throw it long. Still wants to throw it, doesn't get it. Grimman with another layout, doesn't get it, however. He's getting so much air at the moment, Grimman. Folks throws it. Still has it with uh, Hayes. Hayes with the frisbee, trapped on the high side of the field. Throws in the end zone, and Permac with the run through D. Great heads up play by Permac there. Mammoth a little bit slow to switch on to offense there. Ooh. Lenze now. The Saskatoonian. Easy swing to Grimmond. To Murphy. A lot of pace on that disc. Bonnie looks it off to Lenze. Still working down the sideline. Lenze wants the, wants the dump. And there is a trip on the field. Yep. Bonnie had it down the line. Unfortunately, tripped by the I-beam player. And it looks like it is a young contested foul. Bonnie looks like he's taken the, the wind, took him out in that fall. Look, Lachlan Bonnie's coming back from injury at the moment. So maybe his fitness is not quite at 100%. There's another player going down. Uh, Murph's on the sideline. Murphy with, on the sideline looking for Permac. Working it down the sideline. Cramming it down the cram hole, as they say, and that's a goal there. Uh, hold your horses there, or is it? There is a call on the field all the way back to Lachlan Murphy. What was not, the call? Not too sure what it was, but... If only we had a hand signal for that sort of thing, then maybe, just maybe, us commentators and the rest of the team would know what that call is. There was confusion, I think, and I've been player thought Liam Grimmett had called injury and stopped playing. And so now we're going back, we're having a little bit of a chat. Everything's been sorted out though. One of the beauties of playing Ultimate Disc. 
the fact that there is no uh, referee or umpire on the field. It is a self-refereed game. Good spirit. Permac with the nice undercut. Wants to center it. Good, good mark there. There is a pick called. Let's see if it goes back. It is going back. It is going back. And the question is, did it affect? The answer is yes. Did affect. So. Did it affect? It did not affect. It did not affect. There we go. That's why you don't question the observer. Sorry, advisor. <laughs> we don't have observers here in Australia. Murphy with the disc on the high side. There's another There's pick another call. Another pick. Pick City at the moment. Mammoth offense. Maybe a, a bit sloppy. They're pretty tight, that stack. Very tight. Just coming in. Low stall count. Murphy wants a dump to Pernak in the middle of the field. Back to Murphy. Grimman doing a lot of work getting open. Looks up to Bonnie. Great extension by Lock Bon. Scored the goal for Mammoth. And uh, we thought he was injured. Obviously, he still has those hops. He does. Um, I'm not sure how many points he'll play. I was talking with him earlier today. He, sa he said he uh, might only be playing a couple of points, but he's looking pretty good out there, so maybe he'll, maybe he'll keep going. All right. So uh, now it's two up, two mammoth. And I do apologize if this uh, broadcast is a bit biased. Both mammoth boys on the field. Uh, sorry, off the field talking. But uh, we'll try and keep it as unbiased as possible. Saying that, the, uh, the plays that have been coming out from both sides of the field have been absolutely phenomenal. And it is only the second game of the tournament. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of spectators for this game as well. Um, a few of the girlfriends from uh, the Mammoth Boys are here, um, including I see uh, Gina Ferrari, a uh, girlfriend of Lachlan Bonnie, who just scored that goal. Always sure. good to have a bit of support down on the sidelines. I'm sure she's happy. Um, yeah, there's, uh, as you see on the screen here, that's uh, that's the girlfriend. What, who have we got there? <laughs> Take your pick. Oh, Elliot Cook. Um, we've got a Marcus Leesk. Um, Trent, is there, is there Trent, a Trent Thompson? Question mark. I don't know what's going on? Uh, let's just put a pin in that one. <laughs> oh, anyway, back to the play. And, and uh, the disc is out. However, the pole saves the frisbee. Thank God for the pole. Mm. It's always been a bit of a challenge to throw around the pole, but. Ideally not into the pole. I've seen people try and make a pull deliberately around that pole before. Mm. Not always successful. I say, you know who can do that? Lock Bonnie. I've seen him many times do that. Boy's got a good good amount of shape. However, back to the game. Stoddard, I believe, walking the disc up to the field. Alright, Greeny. Grabs the disc, centers it back to can't tell. It's Davy. Davy with the hawk. Woo! Head that Can't out. Can he read it? Can he read it? No. Two mammoth players underneath the disc. Usually two beats one. Not all the time, but most of the time. Yeah, the Ibin player uh, certainly had a bit of height. John McNaughton and Alex Lee aren't the tallest guys on the field, but work together to just box him out there. McNaughton slowly bringing it back up. They're setting up in the Horro. Quick little bit of movement there to Leesk. Back to McNaughton in the middle of the field. To McCarthy Adams. Nice little pump fake there. Back to McNaughton, really running the show here. Scuba to Leesk. Pulls the trigger on the forehand. It's floating to Murray mm, with a big, strong grab. To Thompson to the American import Tim McAllister for the score. Wow, and uh, I believe that was uh, one of the mammoth rookies who caught that frisbee with a big hug from Alex Leesk. Yeah, Max Mar Murray Ung uh, played on the second team of mammoth last year. Uh, we went to New Zealand, made the first team this year. Uh, big body, very athletic. Mm, very athletic boy. Let's uh, let's watch that guy in the replay. Leesk hugs it. Loves a forehand rip, does Alex Leesk. Oh, tight contest. Very tight contest. But Max does eventually bring the disc down for an easy dump to Trent. And Tim McCallisco with the 
Oh, I thought he was going to spike it. Maybe not. Uh, one of the points that uh, not Max Murray, uh, but Max Howlin would like to bring up throughout this tournament is uh, the spike counter. And uh, we saw a few last game with uh, Factory and uh, Ellipsis, uh, but we haven't seen too many aggressive spikes. More, more playful, fun spikes. Now back to the game with uh, Mammoth pulling the frisbee. Elliot Cook's gonna let this one rip. A little inside out. Greeny with the fri uh, frisbee. Goes to the high side to Sinclair. Sinclair back to Greeny. Back to Folks. Folks goes to the middle of the field to 88 Bolton. Go back to Greeny. Go to Folks. Folks goes back into the inside to uh, Davey. Davey rips it. Nice floaty one. Stoddard's looking for it. And is, is that in any doubt? Strong grab, and we've got our first spike of the game. And that's the spike counter, ladies and gentlemen. How, how aggressive was that spike? Uh, Give it out a 10. I would say only probably a 6. Okay. It was okay. a classic flat spike. Oh, okay. So with a little bit of force, but because it's coming on the flat side, um, comes down pretty softly. Mm. Don't want to damage that disc. You don't want it. That's the worst thing that can happen. I'd you know, these, these are these are $20 Frisbees, <laughs> but then again, it's still your Frisbee. It's probably the one that, you know, you've thought and loved for many years, wanting to play with it, and, uh, you know, when a player on your team or even on the opposite team uh, spikes the Frisbee, then, um, you know, you now got a taco disc. That's the worst thing in the world. Yeah, have you ever brought a brand new disc down and then gone, okay, I'll, I'll let it let it be used for this game, and then it gets taco straight uh, away. I There was one of those ones that I had at Uni Games last year, um, but uh, I think that one might have been one of the ones that UQ Ultimate uh, had. Shout out to UQ Ultimate. Um, the apparently best team with men's and women's overall in Frisbee. All right, Chris Brown with a good catch off that pull, centers it to McIntyre. Looks like Obeam are playing a bit of zone here. McCallum now. Strong hammer to Leesk. Taking his time, centering it to McIntyre. Oh, low down, but McCallum saves it. But McIntyre does apologize with the, the big hand. Oh, sorry, mate, didn't mean that to happen. Two English. Phil English, uh, number 11, is actually from Townsville has been selected for the Mammoth team that's predominantly from Brisbane and McAllister scores again. He's racking up the stats here this game. He is. I believe that's three goals for uh, three playful spikes. Three goals out of what? Six? Yeah. That's a fair clip. And uh, apparently he was uh, he was on the D-line for uh, at Worlds from what I was told. Was he? I know he was co-captain yep. and uh, that American team didn't drop a game although Italy certainly pushed, certainly pushed them in the final. They did. Um, yeah, McAllister has certainly brought a lot of experience, uh, even though he is only young, to Mammoths, uh, helping out with a lot of deformations and structures uh, since he's arrived in town. As you can see right now, uh, well actually, never mind, but it is off screen that he is more or less enforcing the whole D-line to tell them what to do, even though he's only been part of the team for about, what, three months? Less than, I think, yeah, even, okay, maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think part of the reason why people listen to him, he's got a very, very good beard. He does. You know who else has a very, very good beard? Robert De Hollander. Oh, I wasn't going to say that, but you can say that. I was going to say Robbie Pockers, but... Oh, maybe, maybe that's what we should do. We should do uh, best beard of the tournament. Ooh. That would be, that'd be a very contested... Uh, Award. It would. There's a couple in this game that are. We do. Are there are a few. That pulls in. I know Locke Murph has a beard, that's for sure. But anyway, back to the game. Davey wants it. Something under. Started with the loud grab. Fantastic grab. Nice grab, David. Good hands, good hands. Looks to Davey again. Davey wants it. Davey gets it. Davey rips it. Pulls the trigger. That's a lovely throw. To uh, Michael McKee on the front of the end zone. I think it's his first touch of the game you've got Fox with the disc centers it back 
to Greeny, in front of the end zone. Unfortunately, we cannot see a thing. I believe that's Fox with the disc. He wants something in front of him. Nothing's coming in front of him. Has to go high side. Unfortunately, Davey cannot pick it up. Murph has fields of space, but there is a call on the field. And unfortunately, <laughs> the Mammoth boys who are celebrating all the way down the end of the field without realizing that half the game is at the back of the other side of the field. Marcus Leesk was probably wondering why he was so free. He's not used to being any more than two meters free of his man. That's true. You don't see a big man like that with hops like his being a deep receiver. And now he's got to walk all the way back. Walk of shame. He's taking his time, catching his breath. It's true. Maybe, maybe it, was a, it was a tactical play on just so that uh, Mammoth can set up. The sideline is throwing a little bit of chat at him. He's taking it in good stead. Oh, stall out. Got a stall out call. On, uh, it must have been on uh, folks at the front of the end zone. Yeah. Dan Gladish is on the mark there. But saying that, All I right. believe he could have played it on. Disc is back in. I'm not too sure about the rules for that. No, that Elliot does Cook, question by the big pump advisor, fake. But Airs it out to Grimmond in the middle of the field. That snappy little forehand. Low shot to Pernak. Gladish is cutting long to Cook. Gives it to his older brother. And Elliot rips it high side. To Murph. Lachlan Murphy now more used to catching goals than throwing assists, but he's done it nicely to Joel Cook, and we've got another spike. Add that to the tally, ladies and gentlemen. That's 7-3. That was certainly a different spike there by Joel Cook, the mm. running through and then smack it down with the fist. You would have seen at the uh, Australian Under-22 Championships last year, the uh, Queensland side specifically, uh, trying out a lot of different spikes. Some questionable, some classics, all different sorts of things. So maybe we'll get some, uh, you know, a bit of imagination with there. We'll see. We'll see what spikes come out. That's a nice little toe toe drag by Murphy there to keep that in. Mm. It wouldn't be the first time he's done that for sure. Saved an Elliot Cook throw. Yes, absolutely. Won't be the last either. The, uh, the Mammoth boys are throwing a bit of chat because they can't listen on the field that the game has stopped. <laughs> but anyway, Mammoth setting up seven on the line. A strong seven as it is. Mm. Got a couple of Barramundis there. A couple of U24 Worlds players. And they got two more rookies. What a spread of players. What I what I'm enjoying actually is the amount of hats mm. that are out there. It, the Queensland sun is quite bitey today, it so is. sun protection is very important. We are the sunshine state, that's for sure. And we've got uh, Hill with the disc in the middle. Goes to Davy. Davy looking for some options downfield. Can't find anything. Back to Hill. Hill goes to low side to Greeny. Greeny's looking for anything. Can't find anything. Goes back to high side. Nice lofty pass over to Davy. Davies looking for options. Goes to the middle of the field to Folks. Folks soots it. Oh, slots it right between the wicket. Goes to McCullis. Coolis to the high side again. I've been with lots of space here. They're doing this pretty easily at the moment. Mm, uncontested, that's for sure. Now we're, we're looking at Folks with the Frisbee. Looking to Greeny. Greeny's looking for some options. Can't find anything. Still looking for something. Goes back to uh, folks and slots it in. He needs downfield players when the handlers can score. And I believe that is 7-4 uh, to I beam. Very yeah. comfortable offense, would you say? Yeah, much better. The only time Mammoth put any pressure on there was when they got literally right to the end zone. Mm. And even then, a little bit of handler movement managed to uh, break that apart. 
When you've got uh, experience like iBeam has with their handlers, you know, you don't need downfill options. No, why would you? Why would you bother? Looks like you got a timeout. Another timeout. And with that, I think we might go to a bit of an hour break. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back after uh, uh, a little bit of a timeout. Maybe just to uh, recoup from that uh, very, very easy um, Newcastle offense that they had there. Maybe a few words were said about what needs to happen to shut down, what, hap what needs to happen to uh, stop those easy, easy options getting through. So the score is, as it says on the screen, 7-4, and we're about halfway through the game. Is it 90-minute games, or is it... Maybe 80, I think? Yeah. 80-minute um, games to 15, it yeah, is. Yeah, okay. I was saying to Max that uh, usually in Brisbane we play to 17. Not in, obviously, national competition, but in our local league, and he couldn't understand why, and I don't blame him. That's a, that's a question we have to ask to our league director. Why do we play to 17? Hmm. I'm totally fine with playing to 15, to be honest with you. If it means that I can finish a game earlier, and get home and, you know, have some food, have a shower, I'm more than happy to. Yeah, very fair. Looks like we got some uh, more Brisbane supporters on the sideline. And the pull goes up. Start out with a big rip. Lefty backhand. Kept that one in nicely. Elliot Cook touched. Sent us to Seb Brown. Back to Cook. Quick dismovement to Bonnie. Bonnie looking to centre. Back to Cook, one-handed grab to Pernak. Pernak looking up. Lindsay very open. Lots of time here. Centres it to Cook. Bit of congestion there. Bonnie works through it. Mammoth here, not a lot of pressure so far. Back to Bonnie. They're really squeezing it down that sideline. When you can cram in the cram hole as much as you want. You Floaty don't really have to move. pass. Oh, that was very easy by Mammoth. Who, who was the one who threw that uh, the second assist? The De second assist, De I Lenzo. believe, that was Elliot Cook. Oh, the floaty backhand over the top of I everybody so. else. I think it was. I think, I think Nigel Lenzo was the only person who knew that this was coming up. Here we go. And. Well, that's the upline oh, to Oh, no, he was, maybe he was uh, Lachlan Bonnie. Yeah, it was uh, Bonnie. Open for days. Yeah. Dump swing score. Can't do anything about that. No player within 10 metres of him. Mm. Murphy with an easy goal. And uh, looks like Mammoth took half. That is half time. 8-4. So we see some footage of some of the other teams travelling to lovely Brisbane for BCI. Who have we got there? We've got, uh, I believe that's... Uh, ellipsis? The backs of Ellipsis? Yes, I think so. Is Dark and white. Ellipsis have two teams? Two uh, they do, but uh, I, I think they're all in the dark. No, no, there's some white teams. Yeah, yeah. and then we've got um, a mammoth player there with the pink hair, Caleb Hudson. He's going to be going to Division 2 uh, in Wollongong. 
Very colourful hair. Colourful tights as well. Mm, he does love his tights. Very floral, I've noticed. Yeah. And as we see the sideline here with, uh, is that Seb Brown? All right. Okay, we're going to see some replays of some of the action from the first half. Ooh, a nice flick from... That was Davey. Davey. Put it in space. Coolest running it down. No troubles at all. He's a big boy. He's got some pace, though. He does. Got a bit of momentum as well. I think we get this as the travel call, wasn't it? I believe it was. Trent Thompson knows his rules. Well, I'd hope so. He did play for Australia recently. Oh, oh, that's a great dig. That was so tasty, too. Tasty block. Coming out of nowhere. Full extension. Mammoth player has no idea what's going on. And then Dang. rips it. Was that a goal? I can't remember if that was uh, a goal. No, I don't think that. It certainly didn't carry. Oh, that's right. That's true. Alex Lease. How much does Alex Lease love a forehand rip? Well, almost as much as his uh, partner, Elliot Cook, loves a backhand rip. Two sides of the same coin. Mm. Alex and Elliot, or Elliot, Elliot, as I like to call them. Definitely Brisbane's premier power couple. Oh, 100%. They've been playing together for years. Still in the same... Uh, not just on the field team. either. No, not in the slightest. So uh, we've been told by uh, a few of the Newcastle chaps that um, we do have to give a quick shout-out to Nathan Purcell. Should be here. Should have come last night. Should have come last night. Should, Should have, have come, come this morning. morning as well, yeah. But unfortunately, apparently, he missed two flights to get to Brisbane. Look, ho hopefully, when or if if he does rock up, the saying of better late than never will apply. Yeah, that's true. Um, I know, certainly from experience, when a player rocks up late to a league game, you make the classic call of fresh legs, you don't get a sub. Yep. I wonder if that'll be the case when Nathan Purcell rocks up today or maybe later today or tonight maybe. at some point if he does rock up well I do know he, they, Newcastle did tell us that he is arriving tonight um, speaking of tonight great segue there that uh, the party you want to tell us about the party source yeah sure so I believe there's a little social gathering um, happening at a new venue in Brisbane called Welcome to Bowen Hills um, is it in Bowen Hills yes it is in oh, okay. Bowen Hills That's it's good. in the suburb of Bowen Hills that makes sense um and what it is, is they've got on a garlic bread festival oh, this weekend. You love, love a bit of garlic bread. How much do you love garlic bread, Bees? Oh, at least seven. Seven? Yeah, and I'm being I'm being Seven out of five? Uh, no, nah, seven out of seven. Seven out of seven. <laughs> seven out of seven, yeah. Welcome to Bowen Hills. So they, have, they regularly have food trucks there. They've got a really nice big bar. Um, I believe the TD has organized for a little space. Ooh. Uh, for us, space. and yeah, garlic bread and some tasty craft beers. What more do you want? I can't think of anything. No, neither can I. I'm stumped. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't would it, would it mind a, uh, a bit of karaoke? Karaoke? Mm. A bit of empty empty orchestra. I do. Look, I'll tell you what. If, uh, speaking out to any of the TDs in future years, if you bring karaoke to a frisbee party, it will be a certified hit. Everybody will love it. Guaranteed, there can never be a bad time with karaoke, especially at frisbee parties, that's for sure. Definitely. Maybe we might get that involved in the uh, other Brisbane tournament later this year, uh, Halibut. Halibut, what a great tournament. Oh, I love a good Halibut. Halibut would have to be my favourite Australian tournament, to be honest with you. Well, it is the party tournament of the year. Mm. Regularly wins that award, actually. Yeah, it does. When is Halibut? Um... Is I want to say August. It is August, Okay, yes. good, good. <laughs> I want to say August purely because that's the time that I remember from it last year. Oh, I should have asked uh, Max Halden on his halibut chances as the uh, resident king of the castle for halibut, king yeah. of the halibuts. He's taken over from Steph Rapato. Mm, he uh, has. Two years in a row has Max's team won halibut. Oh, I think more than that, three or four. Is it three or four? No, I don't think it's that many. I think it's at least three. I'm going to say only two. We'll have to ask him later. Yeah, we will. I'll get him later. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you stack a squad like he does, oh. it certainly makes it a little bit easier in, to in, win. Okay. In his defense, he stacks it with friends. Sure. <laughs> it just so happens that all of his friends uh, play for Australia. That's true. That's very true. 
What is interesting though is that in that half time, Ibeam went to the shade, being sun smart. You can mm -hmm. see them there coming back. And Mammoth, even though they should know better being from Brisbane, decide to have their chat in the sun. Yep. It is, once I've said again, uh, a lovely Brisbane day. We've had, a, we've had some pretty average weather throughout the week. And uh, it's very nice that the, uh, the gods gave us sunshine today. Because yeah. this would not be a fun tournament like it was last BCI when it was uh, raining sideways. Mm. It, was, it was bucketing down during the week. Um, what it has done, though, is really made these fields quite nice. This Ooh. is close to the best I've ever seen these fields. Yeah, actually, you're not wrong. Yeah. Now they say it, I played here on Thursday night. Definitely didn't look like it this then. Yeah, no, they're, they're quite good. It was a little bit slippery. There was a little bit of dew on, on them uh, in the first game, but they've dried out really nicely now. Ground's still quite soft. I think it's they're excellent for ultimate so Absolutely. far. Absolutely. I'll say this is uh, a different field than we had two years ago at last BCI, where we had it at uh, Winner? Wolves Club. Yeah, Winner Wolves. Oh, yeah, the Wol yeah, Wol Wolves Football Club. Um, I'm not too sure why we didn't go there. Maybe because we've just had a really good relationship here with uh, the team at Annalee Junior Soccer Club um, for, some ten fa for, for some fantastic fields. We're about to kick off the second half here. I-beam with the pull. Brisbane Mammoth coming out on offense. And Phil English is going to catch that and pass that to McNaughton. McNaughton, McNaughton looks long. Doesn't want it though. McCarthy Adams. A little bit of trouble here. English doing some dancing before the party to McIntyre. Gets low for a big guy to another big unit in Rob de Hollander. Recently played for the Australian under 24 mixed team in Perth. To McNaughton with the quick dish to McIntyre. The handler's doing a lot of the work here. Centers it to McNaughton. Mammoth just taking their time. Oh, looks two, off. two open shots and doesn't very, take either. Very open. Looks for McIntyre with that big lefty. Oh, straight to a defender. That was a great run through D by number 23, Tim Hayes. He still wants the Frisbee. He's working hard. But unfortunately, Pakulis is not looking at him. He's looking at Davey. Davey gets open. He gets the Frisbee. Mammoth is getting a bit riled up on the sideline. Davey's looking for the inside shot. He does. He gets it. Goes back to Hayes. Hayes is on the sideline. Gives it back to Davey. Davey has no options upfield except for Pakulis. He rips it. Two tall men on the field. Oh, and unfortunately, he, uh, he was moved out of the way. He had position then. He did, he did. He, he just he couldn't read it well. Just popped up a little bit in that wind. McNaughton now has pulled the trigger. Has ripped it. That's going towards the sideline. It's going to be tight. Just carries over looking for Thompson. A very tantalizing option. Mm. Trent Thompson, ex not an overly tall guy, but the vert on him is oh, outstanding. I tell you what, tallest vert in uh, Shane Ultimate, apparently. That's the, that's well, the in, rumor. In the 24s world it is, that's Definitely for sure. in under 24s. Davey now. Oh, what a rip. That's Back floating. That's floating. That's red. And it has been caught. As you can tell by the uh, all the mammoth players putting their hands on their heads saying, oh no. That's a great grab there by the Newcastle Eye Beam player. Who ripped it? Davey. Does Davey? Oh. Davey pulled the trigger. Typical. Dropping bombs. Uh, it's 8-5 to uh, Mammoth. Newcastle, that's the start that they needed for this second mm. half, coming out and getting an easy break. Yeah, really strong start. They uh, Mammoth took some uh, not Artemis that options, and Look, uh, it didn't work out for them. They looked good up until they got to that end zone. Then mm. perhaps a little bit of end zone eyes? Maybe. I say McIntyre does like to, to be the hero. He's, he's the hero that we want and deserve. <laughs> 
but it might not need at the time. No, not then anyway. Yes, that's very true. All right, so it looks like we got some uh, I beam pull. The wind is picking up just a little bit. Oh, we've got that replay. Davey rips it, floats, it floats, it floats. And Tim Hayes, oh, just grabs it. Look, I wouldn't say he read it better. There's a piece that came down and still managed to hold on to it. Strong grab. Yeah. And here's the rip. Mammoth now on the line. We've got Grimmond, Bonnie, Gaunt, Gladish. And unfortunately, Chris Hill pulls it out. Elliot Cook, Zev Pernak, and uh, Sebastian Brown picking the disc up. Got a couple of brothers on this Mammoth team. Sebastian Brown with the disc and Chris Brown. And we've got Elliot Cook and Joel Cook. Fortunately, they put them not on the field at the same time. And Marcus Leesk and Alex Leesk. Lock Bond well open. Centers it to Brown. Brown to Pernak. Looks upfield for a second. Decides the better option is centering it again. Grimman now. Back to Cook. Pernak. Grimman now on this side, on this close sideline. Mammoth moving the disc pretty well. And, and there is a pick a call. Pick call in the stack. A good old flex in the middle of the, uh, middle of the end zone. Can't tell who it was, but the disc is back in play. Sebastian Brown. Handler's doing a lot of work here. There's another pick. And yet another pick. Maybe that's why the handlers are doing a lot of work, because there's mm. picks happening downfield. Looks like Mammoth offense needs to tighten up just a little so that the picks don't happen. Yeah, they're setting up in this vert, and the cups just aren't coming in a good structure. Ian Grimman looking, looking to Lachlan Bonnie. For a pretty simple goal in the end. 9-5 to Mammoth. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see what... Uh Let's see what a Mammoth can do on this defensive point. The wind is definitely uh, picking up, which is something that uh, Brisbane Knights are uh, not used to. No, well, these fields, we play on these fields regularly at night time, and yeah. there's rarely any of, ever any wind. Oh, it causes absolute havoc on our Thursday league when the uh, when, when there's when there's wind, but. We don't usually play during the day in Brisbane. No, well, that's the difference I was about to mention. Mm. Um, conditions certainly, certainly very different between daytime and nighttime, especially in Brisbane. Mm. Okay, I've been with a chance here to uh, cut this lead down. John McNaughton with the pull. Big lefty backhand. That's a nice pull. Working against the wind. Very nice pull. Looking to Hayes. Sorry, Fox. Looks, Looks like, like Mammoth is doing a uh, transition after a few. Bit of folks, folks with the uh, pass goes to Greeny on the high side of the field. Yeah, Mammoth sideline doing the classic counting the passes. Oh, and rips it. Rips it. And McAllister gets the read. Gets oh. the D and immediately hands down, calling for a little bit of patience. Mm. Mammoth is setting up quite deep. Setting up in a horror by the looks of it. McCallum doing a lot of dancing. Calling for Max Murray Ung. Doesn't move fast enough though. Alex Leesk looking for that forehand. Wants to air it out. It's a big backhand by John McNaughton. Rips it to McAllister. Tim McAllister. Grabs it. And oh, throws it away. Dear, Nonchalantly. Dear. 
far too nonchalantly. He'll be disappointed with that, as I'm sure his teammates will be. Yeah, I had a, a teammate on Thursday night do the exact same thing. Who was it? Was it Sebastian Brown? No, it wasn't Sebastian Brown. Seb Brown has way too much uh, control. That's for sure. Anyway, goes to the high side. Davey, looking for options. Can't find anything. Oh, sees a big, streaking number 23, but can't get it. McAllis with the disc. McNaughton with the double happiness. Look, but I tell you what, if uh, number 23, Tim Hayes, can do splits like that, pretty impressive. I think he's going to be uh, a bit of a weapon on the dance floor, potentially. Oh, I'd like to see that. Ooh. Splits are, uh, it'd be a dangerous move, mm. but if it came off, high risk, high reward, certainly. Absolutely. Now I've been told that the I-beam has another weapon on the dance floor. Who's that? Nathan Purcell. Really? Yeah. Do you think we'll get a chance to see that? Look, I tell you what, if he misses a third flight, he might not make it to uh, to the game. But we've been promised by I-beam that he will be here. And uh, we'll hopefully um, be able to see him. But you never know. We might, we might not. I think it's... He's the player everyone's come here to watch, to be honest with you. And it's, uh, you can sense the disappointment over mm. the fact that he's not here. Oh, oh, that breeze. That, that wind is picking up, I tell you that. John McNaughton, the run through D and then immediate pass. Love. Oh, this is an interesting pull. And by interesting, I mean terrible. I don't think that made it past halfway. Did it? It would have been close. Who, th who threw that? Uh, I'm, I'm, I want to say Liam Grimmond because it was Liam Grimmond. That is a typical Liam Grimmond pull. Uh, I think they've decided to take it as a brick, though. Interesting option. They've lost a few metres there. But uh, saying that, I don't mind this because it means that they're keeping it on the high side compared to that low side of the field. They've got folks with the disc on the high side of the field. Good position. Goes to Davey in the middle of the field. And Davey looks for some options. Can't see anything. Nope, still looks him off. Goes to Chris Hill. Chris Hill then goes to... Moving it up though. Greeny with the disc. Looking, Greeny wants it. Greeny's looking forward to something. Can't find anything. Goes to a course with a great grab. Outside edge, but there is a stoppage on the field. And there is a call by the Marcus Leesk. However, the play stands. Sure. Let's see what uh, Newcastle can do. Kukulis wants it. Greeny on the low side of the field. Greeny with the backhand. Goes to Hayes. Hayes is looking. Hayes back to Greeny. Greeny back to Hayes on the high side of the field. Greeny looks off, folks. Active mark by Joel Cook there. Greeny, Greeny back in. Greeny goes to Davey. Looks to Stoddard on the break side of the field and there is a call. I don't think that's the break side, Beeves. I think Mammoth are forcing uh, the high side. Are they? Well, Joel Cook was certainly uh, forcing that way. Oh. And so was, uh, so was Seth Brown on that mark. So that's, so that's uh, on the open side. Well, there you go. Yeah, you are correct. Mammoth is definitely forcing backhand. Backhand for a right-hander. And... Grimman with the gratuitous layout. Questionable decision, but Stoddard keeps it, and it's the goal. 10 6 is the score now. Uh, Brisbane Mammoth over Newcastle Ibeam. Oh, that wind is uh, causing a bit of 
te technical difficulties, if you can hear Indeed. that. For those who are wondering about uh, Cowan Spielman, he is resting that ankle, and it looks like he is not going to be playing for the rest of the game. He's certainly out for the rest of this game. Yeah, he still has cleats on, so he might not be out for the rest of the whatever, but it looks like he's doing a bit of homework because he's got his laptop out. Yeah, well, he has a test on Monday, I believe, an exam. Does he? Ooh. Um, what does he study? I can't remember, to be honest with you. Um, well, there's obviously a reason. Oh, that's right. He, he came up to uh, UQ to it's do medicine. Is it master? Medicine, is it? Yeah. Okay. From what I've been told. Another, a very good player to play for UQ. I'm be definitely hoping that he plays for <laughs> UQ in terms of uni games. It'd be a great pickup as uh, UQ Ultimate has lost a lot of uh, their players, including yourself, truly. But back to the game. We got Greeny pulling the disc on the high side. For Mammoth, we've got McCallum. Oh, but it looks like he might have injured his hammy there. So, for Mammoth, we've got McCarthy Adams, English, De Hollander, McAllister, McIntyre with the disc, Alex Leesk, and Miles McCallum. Phil English now. Working to Al. Mammoth just making small five metre passes up the field. Playing a lot of small ball here. And it looks like that Newcastle Alex has. wants that forehand again. To McCallum, that's a great look. Great vision there by Alex Lees. A uh, Goanna who just competed at the recent under 24 world championships in Perth. Won himself a bronze medal, I believe. Mm. I tell you what, that flick looked way too good. It, uh, it definitely needs a bit of spin on that, especially with this wind. So it definitely doesn't look as easy as it is. No, Mammoth there with a quick point. A fairly quick point. We've got about 12-ish about minutes left. Mammoth with a five-point lead. Let's see if they can close it out. Yeah. All right, I asked this at the beginning of the game. What would Newcastle do if they had a coach here telling them? Because obviously certain uh, decisions have to be made to uh, try and close this gap or at least bring it in within two before the hooter goes. Sure. I think you're at the stage now where you've got to try something different. Yep. Like you have to throw something else out there, even if it's unconventional, because what you're doing currently just isn't working. Okay. If you're playing your A game, and that might be match up D, forcing a certain way, if it's not working, you've got to try something else. There's no harm in it, because what you've been doing previously hasn't been working, so why not toss something out there? Yeah, so do you think that uh, Ivan will continue with this transition, like they did at that point, which worked up until they got to halfway, in which... Obviously, the transition wasn't as quick as uh, they'd like it to be, and uh, couldn't couldn't uh, bring it down quicker. Yeah. I mean, you've got to hold your own for one. That's true. That's very very true. And so let's see if they can do that here, and then we can start talking about defense, I guess. Well, uh, Mammoth does a big backhand uh, pull out of the field. So never mind a spike counter, how about a brick counter? Yeah, it's true. We've we, had a few this game, that's for sure. We could build a house almost. So Davey is walking up to the middle of the field, and it looks like we've got a bit of a zone, I think. This is a 2-3-2 by Mammoth. You've got Davey in the middle of the field. Throws it to McKee. Hasn't uh, touched this much this game. Keeps it up, but there is a call that it is down. That was it very is, tight, but I think he got it. It is then contested, and now uh, the disc stays up. I think Folks has the frizz. They're playing. They're, the passes are easy, but they're not really making any ground here. Mm, that's true. Look, Davy. Davy's looking for options. Can't find anything. Goes cross field to Folks. Folks goes to McCullis. McCullis looking up field. Looking for something. Rips it to Stoddard. Stoddard is boxing him out, and unfortunately can't bring it down. But there is a call on the field, and as you can tell by Miles McCallum's expression, he does not believe in said call. We'll see the replay here. McCallum made up a lot of ground to get in front of him. And he's not a slow boy either. You thought Lefty had it, and then boom, comes in right at the end there. Ooh. It was definitely, uh, you couldn't see any contact on the arm grabbing for the Frisbee. 
Definitely contact in the body. Mm. It looked like Stoddard, he had a piece of it. He did. He had the, he, he had the ability to catch it. Did McCallum affect him enough? Uh, apparently contested. so. So uh, McCallum contests the call, goes back to the course, whatever the stall was when he threw it, and uh, we'll see what happens then. Everyone walks back where the call, when the call was made. And it looks like the disc is coming in at two. Doesn't throw it again. Goes to Fokes, Fokes with the disc. Fokes rips it. But still grabs it. That was Tim Hayes. Picking up the scraps. Wow. I uh, unfortunately I couldn't give that play by play for that one because unfortunately there was a Newcastle player in front of me, but we can look it on the replay and I'll give it to you then. Folks with the rip, it floats, it floats, it floats some more. Obviously the uh, intended receiver was Chris Hill, but oh, oh. if only, who was the mammoth player that Tim did McAllister. that? Tim McAllister. Uh, got a hand to it. Hit it away, unfortunately, straight to the opposition. That's why you catch your D's, Sauce. I was about to say, what's what's that saying? Catch your D's? You're not wrong. Yeah, I You're mean... You're not wrong. If I beam are going to come back into this game, they need a little bit of luck. And that's what... And uh, this is going to help them a lot here. So back 11, within four. Yeah. Keep serve. Well, not really, but keeps that point anyway. Let's see if uh, IBM can get a turn on this D point. Mammoth taking their sweet time with uh, setting some time discussing who is doing what on the field. Yeah, they're having a big chat there. Liam Grimmond uh, letting them know what the play is. On the line we've got Pernak, Gaunt, Murphy, Bonnie, Lindsay, Brown of the Sebastian variety, and Cook of the Elliott variety. And we got Lefty slash Chris Doddard with the disc. Or oh, the winners die down, so this might work well for him. Rips it. Bounce. Big, nice lefty backhand. It's going to stay in. Rolls. Brown picks it up. Elliott Cook now with the disc in the middle of the field. Low pass to Lenze. Picks it up easily. Once the big backhand shot. Well weighted to Murphy. On the edge of the end zone to Bonnie. Lachlan Murphy racking up a few assists this game. He's known as a goal scorer, but if you keep catching it a meter out, you're going to get a lot of assists. Mm. I say, I wonder what was going through Davey's mind then when uh, he, he, it looked like he was going to lay out for it. It looked so close. We will see it on the replay. I thought he was going to, but maybe he thought it was just a bit too far out. Oh. I wonder if he could have gotten it if he did. We'll never know. We will never know. Twelve seven to Mammoth. There's Lachlan Murphy on screen now. Excellent beard. Uh, Lachlan has grown. Mm. He's he, normally baby faced, but he is. But he has grown both his hair and his facial hair out. Um, I thought he was going to shave it for welds, but. I think he'd probably stab people if they tried to get anywhere near his hair. Oh, you're talking about not his beard, but the top oh, of his, his head. Oh, his top knot. Yeah, oh. absolutely. No one's, no one's touching that. No. But. No. I, I think not only would you be in trouble by Murphy, you would be in trouble by his girlfriend as well. Ah, oh, speaking of, Rachel Parsons, what a player. Shout out to Snips. What can't she do, that woman? Back to the game. Elliot Cook is ready for the pull. Waiting for the Newcastle hand. In the game of Frisbee, the uh, the kickoff or the pull, as we call it, only happens when both teams are ready. Uh, it looks like Davey catches the Frisbee with ease, goes to the low side with Greeny. Greeny goes upfield to Folks. Folks looking to Sinclair, looks him off. Goes to Chris Hill. Goes to Davey on high side, hey, uh, Fakes. Looks off Stoddard, and there is a call on the field. Disc is going back. Let's tidy up, folks. Uh, 
Owes them uh, some comments on the sideline. <laughs> but it does not matter because the uh, people on the field are the ones who make the comments. He's pulled the trigger there. Oh. To lefty. Lefty has read this perfectly, but unfortunately he can't grab it. He's read it perfectly. That is heartbreaking. Didn't catch it perfectly. That's a real shame. It was one That was a great rip. It was a great throw. And I'll tell you what, there was one Newcastle player and about four Brisbane players, and he's managed to put it to the Newcastle player. Unfortunately, he's dropped it. Pernak now. Looking some players off. Back to Cook. To Grimman on the break side. Grimman with his distinctive high-release forehand. Pernak now. He's pulled the trigger on that one to Joel Cook. There is a call on the field. Newcastle players aren't moving, making the Brisbane players waste their energy. I did wonder why he was so open, and that's why. Not a throw a call there. Coming from the sideline up to Joel Cook. Doesn't quite get it back. Look to Liam Grimm. You're probably, you're probably not wrong in the sense that Joel Cook isn't a thrower. Saying that, uh, he believes that uh, he'll be the next Goey's MVP in the, the next campaign, but uh, time will tell for that one. Liam Grimm with the disc. The disc is back in. Grimm to Pernak in the middle of the field. To Joel Cook. Ooh, huge pump fake huge that fake. no one fell for. Pernak, he's looking for Murphy. Ooh. Dan Gladish is following up and picking up the scraps. Look, I tell you what though, Lefty definitely uh, had a good read on it. Jumped at the same time as Murph, but uh, unfortunately they're both not tall enough. Look, you could say Lefty did his job. He did. He, he, he beat he his, stopped his man getting the frisbee. Absolutely. Um, you know, unfortunately for the rest of his team, uh, Dan Gladys just kept streaming through and managed to uh, pick it up over it went over the top. So that brings us to 13-7. I think. Yep. 13-7 to uh, Mammoth over Newcastle. I beam game to 15, and we've got. We, I did hear the hooter. Um, a point or two ago, um, I believe. But then again, it's only when the uh, players actually recognise it. But maybe I might have been hearing things. I've never seen Dan Gladish run so fast in my life. I'll tell you about Dan Gladish. He has improved immensely uh, from an athletic standpoint over the last couple of years. He used to have a lot of back problems. Um, some injuries, has worked extremely hard uh, to make his way as well from the second division to uh, the top Mammoth team, and um, yeah, he's paying the dividends. Big rip by John McNaughton. The wind stops it three quarters away the field. Runs around folks, folks picks it up. Folks look for options, nothing to move it. Mammoth playing their 2-3-2. Two, two. Scuba over the top. It's number 23, Tim Hayes. But unfortunately, he drops it and uh, Greeny is clutching his hammy. Boy, he's getting a monster. Oh, he's a lucky blow. Double cramp? Anytime you can get Trent Thompson oh, touching your body, touching your oh, body is, is dream a good boat. time. Speaking of boats, I know we talked earlier about Trent uh, working as a teacher. Yes, that is um, correct. Has he always been a teacher? Um, ah, okay. So obviously he, with with a teacher's salary, he might need some uh, money on the side. I know that he certainly wasn't working, well obviously wasn't working as a teacher while he was still studying to be a teacher. That's I true. think he did work on a boat at some point. What type of boat? Um, it was a boat that sailed around in the middle of the Brisbane River. Um, and held, I believe, certain types of parties on it. Oh, yeah. I'll have a good party every now and then. Yeah. Um, I think, as a general rule, uh, Greeny's been carried off here and giving a, <laughs> <laughs> giving a little peace sign to show that he's okay. Um, good read by Alex Leesk. But Did there catch is call? a call on the field by Leesk saying that uh, the contact that was 
made by Hayes. Is it Hayes? Yep. Um, affected his ability to catch the Frisbee. Now, the best thing about Frisbee, like I said before, is the fact that it is a self-refereed game. The calls are made by the opposition, um, sorry, by, by both parties, and uh, they talk about to come to a mutual agreement. Obviously, the call, the foul that Alex Lees made, was contested, and therefore the disc goes back to McAllister, which would, with whatever stall it had at the uh, at at the time he threw it. Alex Lees does doesn't mind making calls. He doesn't. As is his right as a player. All right, going back in. McAllister now. Oh, Ooh. that's floaty, and Trent Thompson showing his showing that vert. God Kathy damn. Adams now against one of the tallest players in the league. Tim McNaughton. He's looking, wants something. Max Murray. Mm. Oh, not not a great throw there by Max. Oh, I'd love to see this matchup, John McNaughton. But unfortunately, Lefty decides to go back under, and Davies did not recognise that. Unfortunate miscommunication there by I Beam. Bit of a bit of a chuckle on the field with that one. McNaughton. Oh, was there a piece on that? There was a filthy piece on that. That disc was not going sideways when John left its hand. Huge hand block by Lefty. Very tasty piece. Mm -hmm. And we have got Davey picking up the frisbee. Let's see if he can connect this time. Goes on the inside. Lefty with the disc. Lefty looks it. Goes to Hayes and the Laws are call on the field and Finn stops running, so therefore the disc goes back. We've got a pick call. I would say it did affect the play as the Mammoth defender stopped running after this was thrown. John and Lefty are discussing what the store was, making sure everybody's ready. And Lefty keeps the disc in at stall. Oh, thank you, John McNaughton. Throws it again. Throws again. And it connects with the disappointment look on all the Mammoth players. Great grab. Really great grab. Apparently the disc does not lie. <laughs> As threw it once, connects, throws again, still connects. We are now looking at 13-8 to Mammoth. Let's see if uh, I-Beam can get within two in the next few minutes to keep this game alive. It would be a stretch. It would be a stretch at this point, I think. Saying that, in the uh, in the last game against uh, Factory and Ellipsis, yeah, uh, Ellipsis was 7-1 at a timeout. Factory brought it back to 7-5. Oh. And then, unfortunately, Ellipsis ran away with it. But Factory gave it a good red hot go, and uh, and really showed that you know you can't give up even if there's one point within it. Excellent fight. Let's see if I Beam have the same in them. Mm. Looking at that replay, yeah, that's a really strong grab there by Hayes. Hayes um, took position well, got up full extension with the arms. All right, I Beam need a block here if they're going to make things interesting. What have we got on the Mammoth line? We've got Lindsay, Marcus Lee, Sebastian Brown, Elliot Cook, Bonnie, Bernack, and Grimmond. I'll tell you what though, Grimmond looks very good in those short shorts. His shorts are very, very short this I believe, season. I believe they're a, uh, extra small, and uh, he gambled on that one, and um, I'm not saying it paid off, but uh, he's definitely showing some leg there. Elliot Cook now, good movement here by Mammoth. Pushing through, Liam Grimman really controlling it here. He's still wanting the disc too, but gets looked off by Bonnie. Mammoth using all areas of the field. Getting trapped on the sideline here a little bit. Uh, that is easy, on the low side. Easy breakaway there by Brown. Benak taking his time. Just assessing the options. Grimman doing a lot of work. 
through Making the middle it look of the field effortlessly there. too. His work rate is super high. There he goes again. Just directing the flow, just keeping the pace. And that's a. What happened there? We saw the disc go forwards and then the disc went sideways. It was a big D by, I think Hayes. That is Hayes. Let's see if that replays. No, Looks at this is the throws it. That's the replay. Oh, that's the catch. <laughs> Bring it back in. Sinclair at the disc. Goes to... Uh, I don't know who that is. But there is a call on Al the field. Marcus Lee's absolutely monstering Sinclair there. Sinclair keeps the disc. Coming on store zero. Looking for McKee, throws the inside, grabs it, oh and rips, rips to the right side too, Hayes grabs it, looking for options, can't see anything, looking for anything backwards, still can't see anything, goes to lefty, uses the height, lefty goes to the low side, goes to McKee, McKee's looking for something, goes to Bakulis, Bakulis looking on the backhand side oh. of the field and unfortunately Sinclair cannot get that frisbee. That's unfortunate. Wide open then. That was amazing flow by uh, Newcastle. They, yeah, re they really need to continue that play and make sure that they uh, ma uh, get those 100% throws to the end zone. Yeah, it's a shame there. They worked really, really hard. Looked excellent all the way up the field, but just that last pass. Sebastian Brown now getting out of the trap on the sideline to Cook on the other sideline. Through the middle to Marcus Lees. Looking for Grimmond. The connector. Oh, Back I to Grimmond. Brown was going to rip it through. then. Elliot will rip Elliot this for Cook. Cook. Takes seven more steps than needed. Little travel after the bobble. It is still not a... Uh, it was not a stoppage until everyone decided to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, there has been a rule, a rule change in the most recent WFDF rules that a travel is not a stoppage. I've been looking to contain here. Then it takes that on his knees. Round now. Back to Grimmin. Grimmin with a scuba to Cook. Knocks over Hayes in the process. Kernak. Fakes the scuba to Cook. To Grimmin again. Grimmin in the middle. Points to where he wants to throw it. Back to Brown. Brown again, back to Cook, and to Grimmin. Grimmin's touching it every three, two or three passes at the moment. There he is again. Throw some fakes. Cook motioning where he wants some cuts. Back to the middle with Zev, number 99 for Mammoth. Lenze, the Canadian. Back to the other Canadian. Back to the other Canadian, back to the other Canadian. <laughs> Grimmin now, taking his time, motioning where he wants players. Looking very cloggy here. Mammoth are keeping their composure, but lots of passes in such tight spaces lend themselves to Ds. And Grimmin feels like that he didn't travel, but apparently he did. Goes to Cook, Cook to Bonnie. Bonnie on the other side of the field now. Defense has been stretched and again. A very, very casual hammer over the top from Elliot Cook to Marcus Leesk. The Marcus score. Leesk, apparently number one receiver of all of Mammoth. I would certainly say he has the uh, number one rig on all of Mammoth. Um, not sure about their receiver call, but it is known for his rig. See the replay here, super easy hammer there. Marcus so, Leeds in all sorts of space. And uh, that's the end of the game, folks. That is the end of the game. Mammoth with a fairly comprehensive win, I think, in the end. Obim showed some flashes of uh, some good play, but I think Mammoth came out very strong at the start, and Obim just couldn't quite peg it back.
So with the end result being 14.8 with uh, the time cap being capped. Look, all credit <laughs> to uh, to Newcastle, smallest squad in the tournament. Made Gave it a good rip. Made even smaller by the fact that, unfortunately, Nathan Purcell missed his flight last night and this morning. Hopefully he'll show up at some point over the weekend to provide some relief to his teammates. He might be the saving grace that uh, Newcastle needs. He could be. He could be. I know that uh, I-Beam did play very well a few weeks ago at uh, SMO, getting that second place. So we'll see if uh, if they have a, a similar size squad as they did back then. I'll have to do some research tonight to give you the uh, uh, inside scoop on uh, who needs to... Uh, arrive on time and not miss his flights. Do you think Purcell is the missing piece for I-Beam? Look, I'm not saying he's not, but there could always be the chance that he is. Maybe. Maybe. Got to look at the common factor here. Mm. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we'll end our coverage of the second game of the day. Uh, stay tuned for more Ultimate Frisbee here at the Brisbane Camera Invitational. I'd like to thank my co-host Andrew Source McCasker for a great game and uh, hopefully we see more Mammoth and I-Beam play throughout the day. Thanks very much Beavs, it's been a pleasure.